Today we are talking about my updated wedding photography kit for the Canon R6. Ohio, gozaimasu, and welcome to the studio. Today, I'm talking about the Canon R6 kit, my updated kit. I made a video about this, uh, I guess, a couple of months ago as well as last year. Things have changed a little bit over the, over the course of the year, and I thought that I should just give you kind of an updated, here's what I am currently using. As I'm sure you're already aware, the members website, end of the month, goes up in price. It goes, the year one rate expires. Uh, what the members website is, all the video sets and all the video premium content that is not up here on YouTube. You're seeing it all on the screen right now. There is so much content up there. If you're interested in taking your wedding photography from one, two to maybe five weddings per year, up to something like 15, 20, 30, 50 weddings a year, uh, this will give you all of the tools to do that, both the, some of the camera tools you need, as well as more importantly, the business tools, uh, which I think is kind of the most overlooked part of wedding photography that quite honestly, most of wedding photography is business that we're doing a series of one-off sales over and over and over again. And if you become very efficient and good at business, uh, you're going to find a lot of success in this genre. Unfortunately, photography skill is just kind of the prerequisite that there's so many good photographers now that you can't really stand out by just being a great photographer that you got to kind of take it next level with your business as well. Now the Canon R6 kit, why you came to this video. Things have changed. Last year, uh, if you watch one of the older videos, I was shooting actually two Canon R6s at wedding days. I should also mention that I am filming this on the Canon R6 and I'm actually using the 14 millimeter Samyang lens, uh, which is also a very nice lens and I hope that they get to continue to manufacture them. I don't know what the deal is with Samyang and Rokinon right now. Uh, and we've messaged their salespeople and they also don't know. Basically the situation is that they kind of got delisted from the Samyang website and they're still available on the Rokinon website, but I don't know how much longer this lens and this lens will exist for or if there's some sort of legal thing going on I have no idea and no one seems to want to talk about it so if you have any information please put it in the comments below because I hope that third-party manufacturers are allowed to make glass for the Canon RF system as well as an icon Z system that utilizes autofocus which is kind of important uh, for us as wedding photographers and wedding photographers and anyone buying mirrorless you bought mirrorless probably to get upgraded autofocus it just works all of the time and if you are stuck to just buying the expensive rf glass it's kind of a bit of a bummer and it makes the system not really that attainable for a lot of people fortunately so again future topic to get into the stuff that i'm using maybe we'll talk first about what i'm not using uh, you may have seen a few videos on the channel i guess maybe two weeks ago that i was using the canon 28 to 70 f2 and this seems like it's the the end all be all lens for wedding photographers event photographers it's like it does everything. It's an F2 fixed prime, or not fixed prime, but starts at F2. Uh, you shoot it all at F2 from 28 millimeters all the way to 70. You get so much versatility from that lens. And it really is just, it makes it wedding days super easy, especially paired with a, an R6 or an R5 or even an R. Uh, it really makes your wedding day very easy uh, that you can just do everything on one lens. What I found is that the barrel of it is bigger than the 7200, so it feels a little bit weird to use all day. And personally, this is personal preference if you choose to use that lens, by all means. It's very expensive, but it is very much worth it. Um, I found that personally, I still prefer the look and the feeling of the Canon 50 or 85 millimeter primes, or we'll talk about in a moment, the Samyang 85, uh, that I would rather be kind of locked at that focal length, and maybe I miss out on a little bit of the versatility overall, but I feel like I deliver better images overall, and I feel like at least mentally I have to work a little bit harder and I have to get out of just the, the immediate like, oh, I'll just do a wide shot and then I'll zoom in. I feel kind of lazy using it, which I guess I feel lazy using the, the autofocus in the system too. You just point at anything and it just works. So I'm not using that lens. Um, there are also, I guess as a video creator, so this is kind of, uh, I guess it is within the scope of wedding photography, but also kind of outside of the scope as a content creator here on YouTube. Um, I actually traded my 28 to 70 F2 back in for my 24 to 70 for uh, the R series. And that lens as a main lens for wedding day, another phenomenal solution if you like being at that 24 to, to 70 range. I would probably recommend, even though you're going to miss out on being able to shoot every photo you want at f2, you now have to shoot at 2.8. That lens is also probably my recommendation. I would probably push you to that uh, over the 20 to 70, uh, especially if you're interested in doing lots of video coverage as well. Um, the IBIS within the R6 actually works 
incredibly well that if you're shooting the 28 to 70, it does not have IS in it. Um, just the IBIS alone, I was 100% happy with the performance from the in-body stabilization. But with the 24 to 70, you get stacked. So you get basically the, the IBIS in the camera, plus you also get stabilization in the lens, which does really, really help out and makes for phenomenally stable footage uh, that just, again, makes your life super easy, almost feels like you're cheating a little bit. Um, and also the focus breathing was another issue for me that as somebody that makes a lot of video content, moving back and forth, you get some heavy uh, focus breathing from the 28 to 70, which doesn't really exist too much. It still does a little bit, but not too much in the, the 24 to 70 that I'm still very happy to use it. Um, what focus breathing is, is if I do this, see how the, the frame kind of punches in and out? Uh, with the 28 to 70, you see that quite often. And at a wedding day, if somebody's kind of moving a little bit towards me, you really kind of see that in the edges. Um, and it bothers me a little bit. Maybe if it doesn't bother you, then by all means, go with the 28 to 70. But I would say save some money and get the 24 to 70 2.8 which uh, I'm sure is gonna anger some people in the comments. So if, if you do have good things to say about the 2870, please let me know in the comments. I'm happy to maybe change my mind over time. But as of right now, at least for me personally, uh, I've stepped back to the 24 to 70 because it's a more useful tool for not only my wedding days, but also just kind of everything that I do in regards to photo and video. To talk about the camera equipment that I'm currently using, we'll start with the, the lens that I've had the longest. This is actually the first lens that I bought for the R series. It is the Canon RF 35 millimeter F 1.8 IS macro STM. A lot of modifiers on these lenses. And if I could pick just one lens to go out and create content with that if um, maybe not necessarily just at a wedding day, but if I was out and I was doing video coverage or I was making a documentary, if I could just stay on this lens, this is like my preferred kit. Small camera body, R6 is relatively small with this lens and just go out and I'm very happy to create anything. Um, with the, again, the stacked IS, if you're doing video coverage, it's just gonna look amazing. And for a very, or relatively inexpensive in regards to the, the L primes, I guess this is the only L that I have right now. Um, in regards to cost, you're getting a lot for this. The 50 is also a great option. The 85 is also a great option. We'll talk more about the 85 when I talk about this Samyang 85 1.4. But this is a lens that I'm very, very happy with and I'm happy that I purchased it and I will probably never sell this lens. This will always be something that is either in my bag or at least on my desk um, with easy access because I do use it all the time. My kit last year was this lens on a Canon R6 as well as an 85 on my main body. And I would say if I had to give any sort of metrics of kind of how I use it, I would say maybe 85, 90% of the shots are from the 85 millimeter lens uh, or a 50 if you prefer. And then the additionals are from this, uh, which means usually it's actually in my bag. I can kind of sense when I'm going to need this lens now. Um, if obviously you walk into a ceremony like I, I posted a video yesterday if you want to check it out. That ceremony, obviously I could not have covered that with an 85 millimeter lens. Um, I would have loved to, but there was just no space to do it. And this really helps you out. Um, this has actually helped me out a lot of times. So very small, put it in your bag, get this as even a, a backup lens if you're shooting, if you know you're going to shoot that eight, 85 or 50 one, two all day and you need something as a backup, uh, get this, put this in the bag so that just in case you ever need it, uh, that you have it. I just find overall that this is an incredibly useful lens and it's definitely something that you should have if you're on the Canon RF series. Next up, what do we want to talk about next? Let's talk about this, uh, this, this big guy here. It has a little window here, kind of fun, right? So you can move your filters. I don't use filters, I use lens hoods. Um, basically this, the lens hood kind of protects it from bouncing off of stuff which kind of does the same thing that a filter would do. So maybe uh, something to, to think about. I don't like putting another element of glass that's maybe not as high quality in front of a lens like this. I like to just, however Canon designed it, I want to be able to shoot it like that. So I don't use filters for that reason. Um, I will use, uh, I guess, variable NDs and whatnot if we're doing video coverage or if I want to be doing long exposures, but in the scope of wedding day, I will never really be using a filter. Um, this lens is great because it's small and then it just becomes ridiculously big. I kind of wish that it didn't do that, but I don't know. It's a great lens. Uh, as somebody that shoots traditionally larger weddings, uh, I would say that this is kind of one that's absolutely needed. Um, I will also mention that if you're fine shooting through an adapter, that uh, I guess this kind of also speaks to the, the 24 to 70 as well as the, the 7200. The Tamron versions of these lenses uh, are amazing. Uh, the, the G2, the, the gener second generation of them, 
I would be super happy to shoot with that, save some money. Um, for me to shoot through an adapter all the time, I feel like it just made more sense for me to go with the, the actual native glass, um, especially as somebody that kind of creates YouTube content here as well. Um, but I will say if you're looking to save some money or if you don't quite want to step up to something like this yet, that the Tamron G2 products are amazing and I really do hope that they'll eventually come to the RF and also the Nikon Z mount as well. Um, I'm really hopeful for that. But this lens is something that if you only bought this lens, I feel like you could make amazing wedding day coverage. If I only had to choose one lens, either the 24 to 70 or the 7200 for a wedding day, I would choose the 7200 pretty much in every situation that I can imagine, except for one. This is the only wedding that I can remember that I couldn't have used this for the entire day. Uh, it is a tiny coffee shop. There are probably 125 people in this tiny coffee shop and uh, I could not have used this, this lens on that day, but I think pretty much every other wedding, if I only had this, uh, I could use it. Uh, my friend Nova calls it the lazy girl lens that when she's out and she doesn't really feel like working too hard as far as brain power goes, <laughs> just put this on your camera and shoot all day. And again, makes your life really easy and everything just looks amazing from it. So it's kind of a little bit of a cheat code, I guess. 7200, absolutely happy with this lens and I'll be doing a little more videos with it on the channel. That's not grammatically correct, but I'll be doing more videos with this lens on the channel. Um, I filmed a review for it, I think last September, October, November, uh, and I never put it out. And uh, I will do that now that I actually have some proper wedding coverage with it. Uh, last year I was very heavy on the 85 1.2, but now I have sold that because of this Samyang lens. This is the Samyang 85 millimeter F 1.4 RF AF made in Korea, Samyang. Not a lot of modifiers on this. Does not have stabilization. Uh, update your, uh, basically you have to get the dock for it if you want the IBIS to work. Um, if you just get one of these lenses or the, even the 14 out of the box, it will likely not be uh, at a firmware point that actually allows you to use IBIS. Uh, so make sure that you get the dock to update. Um, but this lens, the look and feel, so basically my, I guess, direct comparison was versus the 85 F 1.2, which is an L series lens, very expensive, very heavy again. Um, I actually got repetitive stress injury from, from using that lens too often at weddings, or I guess the, the correct amount at weddings, I, using it as a main lens. Um, I actually developed some, some sort of just like muscle issues, which was really interesting. Big lens, but amazing image quality, fantastic out of focus areas. Like it's truly a joy to use. I moved then to the Canon F2 for a little bit, and that lens is also amazing if you've chosen to go that route, like it's great as well. Um, the benefit with the Canon F2 uh, over this here is that you also get the, well one you get IS in the lens, so you get to again do the stack double IS, um, which makes for just incredibly stable footage, um, especially shooting handheld like at a wedding day. That's more on the video side of things, but you also get macro functionality too, that you can use the Canon 85 F2 as a macro lens, which for wedding days, super helpful that you can get those ring shots and you don't have to bring an additional lens with you. Um, I've used the Tamron 35 uh, when I was shooting digital SLRs. I always use that as my macro, even though it wasn't a true macro, it was close enough. Um, the Canon 85 F2 is a great option if you just wanna have something that does a lot of things. What kind of set me apart for this Samyang is that I'm a little bit of a bokeh junkie, not in a negative way necessarily, just as a wedding photographer, you kind of need to make that depth of field uh, really shallow and make things disappear that if there's something going on in the background, you don't want it there. You're downtown in a city, you don't want all the signage. Like to be able to shoot at F1.4 really does kind of give you more options uh, as well as like getting ready areas. You walk in somewhere like this, there's just stuff and people all over and people wearing clothes that aren't maybe in their wedding clothes yet. And if you don't want them to be like really kind of in focus in the background, that's one of my issues, I guess. And one of the reasons that I don't shoot a 24 to 70 all day is because while I can kind of make some of that disappear, I still feel that it remains very distracting in the background. Um, with an 85 at one four, you get that very nice out of focus background that you just if you want that to disappear, just get closer to your subject and all of a sudden, like everything in the background is gone. Um, I find for wedding photography that shooting at 1.4 or even at 1.2 makes just prettier images overall. Aesthetically, the images are going to look more kind of wedding and they're gonna look softer, they're gonna look um, more dreamy and whatnot. Um, I find that by shooting at 1.4, I can achieve that very easily. Um, the characteristics specifically to this lens, I absolutely love. Um, it reminds me a lot of my favorite 85 of all time, which is the, uh, the, the it's actually on the Nikon side, the Nikon 85 1.4G. It's a very small 85 and 
There are a lot of technical issues with it, technical issues that do not exist in this, but the overall feeling and kind of softness of the lens, um, not necessarily say like lack of sharpness, just the way that it achieves focus and the focus rolls off. Um, that softness and that those characteristics, I feel like have somehow come over to this, even though I'm sure that they weren't modeling this lens after that, that they were just like, we need to make an 85 that has autofocus. I find that when I'm shooting this lens, I am very, very happy with every single image straight out of camera. Uh, I also don't notice a whole lot of technical issues either. Um, I figured by going with a third party lens, especially when it's, I guess, I don't even know what the, the cost is on the 85. I feel like this is like maybe one third the cost of the 85 one two. Uh, I figured by going with a lens that was that inexpensive in comparison that I was going to pick up a lot of technical issues. There was going to be vignetting and ghosting and weird stuff that I didn't want. In actual use, I haven't really discovered that happening in any images that I've been like, that is, I can't use that image. Um, it's always just performed great in every situation. So uh, I do 100% recommend this lens. If you're looking for that macro lens, as well as maybe if you're doing more handheld video footage, go to the Canon F2, um, also incredible. And if you really want the maximum out of focus background, I guess go with the, the L12. Uh, that 85-12 really is an incredible lens, but I think that for the, the cost savings, as well as just the general wrist savings and the fact that you can throw, throw this in your bag and um, carry it around with you a lot easier, I personally lean here. So that's, um, that's my, my thought process on that. Hopefully the thought process is helpful. Um, beyond lenses, I have a Godox V1C. With this V1, I think it's important to have a backup flash, but that said, I've never run to the end of a battery. Um, and I've also never had any issues that it just like hasn't been working, that it's just worked really well all of the time. Um, I also have a wireless trigger, but I've discovered that I'm not really using it a whole lot this year. Um, that the increased ISO and just the fact that you can go infinitely into ISO, as long as you have good light in the room, uh, I find it to be really easy and helpful. Um, I find that I don't really need to use flash a whole lot of the time. I use flash at the wedding that I posted yesterday only because it basically when you're, when you're trying to expose for people and they're in complete shadows in the foreground, but there's lights in the background, you're going to start to run into some problems. So I figured I'd add some light to them. But as long as people are in good light most of the time, I'm pretty happy to shoot ambient with this 85 1.4 at 1.4 and this Canon R6 at even like 10,000 ISO, you're totally fine. Um, which means that basically you're at that point, you're at candle light darkness. And if it's beyond candle darkness uh, in the room that you're in, people can't physically see you know, one another. So it's probably not going to be an environment that's actually realistic. So um, yeah, get these the, these primes. And while it might be like amazing to just like, oh, I can just use the, the, the 7200 at 2.8 all the time, um, I do find myself in environments that get darker than what a 2.8 I'd be comfortable with. And when I have to get into like the 20,000 ISO area with this to get a usable image, that's kind of my comfort limit. I'm sure you can and you can run noise reduction and everything on it, but I would rather just be shooting this in, in that situation. And then I bring one battery. That's exciting, right? This is literally a battery. Two batteries will get me through a full wedding day. I find that if I'm, uh, at least yesterday's wedding that I posted, that was one, I didn't even get to the end of one battery. I got about three quarters of the way through a battery. Uh, I felt pretty comfortable with that. Bring this, bring the charger, just plug it into the wall. And also um, I would suggest against plugging it into places that you're only, that you're a transient being within that, that if it's a, a bridal prep area and you're at a hotel, and you're gonna be leaving that hotel and driving 45 minutes, don't try to charge your battery there because you're gonna leave that in the charger and then it's gonna be a problem. Uh, what I would recommend that once you actually get to the venue or if you can get a car charger, get that. Um, so you're able to charge your battery. Battery's not that exciting. That's all for my Canon kit. Main lens, 85, Samyang, F1.4. Second lens, usually on a second camera body, now just in my bag, 35. 1.8 RF. And then I would say for ceremonies or for when I have kind of infinite outdoor space, I'm usually on this now um, just to give myself better variety that if I have 10 minutes with a couple and they're walking this way and walking back towards me, 85, you're going to get one shot. You're going to run around and try to get maybe two different kind of versions of the same thing. With this, you can easily get the shot at 200 and then at 70 and then vertical and then horizontal. And you get a lot more variation a lot quicker um, rather than just being stuck on a prime. Um, so I use that a little bit for, uh, I guess, for that. For, uh, I guess, engagement sessions, I typically only bring this, but I will be experimenting bringing this. I have one later today, provided it doesn't rain. Looks like it might rain. Um, but I'm going to bring this with me, and if that works out, I'll post the entire thing for, for you here on YouTube. That's all. Canon R6, Godox V1, Godox V1, I don't know how you want to pronounce it. 35, 85, 7200, one battery.
That's it. That's all. It's Travis Rice film. If you want to go watch that. Maybe watch one of the newer ones if you want. Really got into snowboard films this winter. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, the member's website, year one rate, expires at the end of this month, July 31st, 2021. Gone forever. If you have it, you can stay with it as long as you'd like. And if you do sign up and it's, the site is not what you were expecting or you don't find the value from it, send me an email. I'm Taylor at taylorjacksonphoto.com and I will send your money back, 100% money back guarantee on this website because I think two people in the history, so over the past year, I think I did the same deal when the member site was Patreon as well. Um, it, I think two people took me up for the offer on Patreon and I think two have taken me up on the member site. So if that, I guess, speaks to, to anything, um, hopefully, You'll find good value in it. And um, yeah, that's all for the day. See you next time.